Okay, so now we begin with uh, the uh, reassembling of Pen Spin Fisher VI 6500 a life liner wheel. And we'll start with the uh, drag knob, spool, and handle. And the grease I'm going to use today is SKF LGFB. It's a pretty thick grease, but I like it because number one, it doesn't smell. And number two, well, I've been using this for five years now. So for bigger reels, it's uh, fine, but for smaller reels, it's a little bit too tacky. And for drag grease, um, as of now, uh, today is 24th of January 2023. Cal's drag grease is still uh, a little bit hard. No, no, not a little bit. It's pretty hard to get in Malaysia at least. So I'm using other grease, which I've also used for quite a while now. This is Cyclion Sea, sea Lion Teflon grease. It's white. And I've used this for also uh, almost five years now, so it works pretty well. But if possible, I would prefer to use Cal's drag grease. And uh, if it's still not available, then the second option is to get uh, Mercury 24C grease or uh, Quicksilver 24C grease, which is almost about the same as Cal's drag grease, but those are pretty expensive now, so I'm just going to use what I've used for four years now. This is also not cheap nowadays. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's just begin. And first, we're going to do the handle. And so I'm just going to grease the shaft here. This is pretty tacky grease, so bear in mind that uh, it will make uh, the handle rotation pretty stiff. A little bit, not like too much. Okay, so we're just going to grease uh, critical areas. Unfortunately, Pen didn't make this to be easily removed, so we're just going to leave it at that and just grease like a lot inside here. Okay, and next we're going to go here, the knob, just going to give it not too much, but then again, this is a rubber, uh, what do you call it, uh, rubber, galvanized rubber or something, vulcanized rubber, yeah, vulcanized rubber, so vulcanized rubber will become sticky over time if used, so I would like not really recommend it, but if you can, and if you think it's appropriate, then change this knob to Gomex's knob or any other knobs you're going to find in aftermarket. Okay, and for this one, this is the cover. So this cover doesn't have any uh, screw, but then again, you still have to grease it. Greasing will make sure that the cover remains uh, lubricated so that it's easy for you to pop this one out. If not, then this cover will stick into here. And once it sticks, it's going to be a problem. And finally, about this screw. So this screw was held by screw glue or Loctite, as most people call it. And I'm just going to do about the same. Uh, if you're planning on putting screw glue here, do not grease inside here. And I'm just going to take the glue now. So I would prefer to use Loctite, uh, but I've used this type, this one here for quite a while. It works fine, but uh, with all screw glue, you have to be careful not to put too much. Like even a drop is too much. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you guys how much. Just like a small dab. There we go. Like really small dab. You don't have to put too much. Uh, it's better to apply to the screw, but I found that it's better if you apply it inside here and then put on the screw, at least for fishing reels. And yeah, so just put this one on and a little bit of oil, too much for now. You can put more later. You can see it's uh, tacky when you put on grease, it's going to be tacky, but uh, it's just how I do things. Uh, I've used this method for quite a while now and most of my reels that I service will have a much better longevity. Okay, so now I'm just going to put on the screw. You won't be mistaking this screw for other screws because it's about the only one of its size in the pen lineup, in this uh, spinning reel, not the pen lineup, in the spinning reel. Alright. Don't tighten too much. But again, if you can tighten like all the way without having any issues with the rotation, then by all means do it. I'm just going to do that. And it feels good. A little bit of play, which is good. And we are good here. And just gonna pop on the cover. And there you have it for the handle. Uh, not hard at all, just like simple stuff. Okay, so we're good with the handle, so we're just, just gonna set this one aside. And next we're gonna do the drag knob. And for this drag knob, um, oh, hold on, it seems to be missing one spring, the spring on this one, uh, if you excuse me for a few minutes. All right, so we're back, and oh, this one just rolled into the crevice here. Fortunately, I found it. If not, then it's gonna be 
uh, quite a problem. So anyway, so this is the drag knob. Uh, the construction is pretty easy, not hard at all. And for drag knobs, I would prefer that you guys, that everyone, just grease like a lot because this is one of the parts where you don't have to service very often. Like once every two, three years is fine. Okay, so grease a lot and then you take this one. Just put this one right into here. Just press it. Okay, there we go. Not Nothing complicated at all. And then we're going to take this one. Be very careful with this one because this is easily uh, lost. So if you're going to tear up down this part right here, be extra careful with these two parts. The spring and the clicker. So this one will have two holes, one here, one here. Uh, either one is fine. I'm just going to put it here because it has a good amount of grease already. And then you're just going to take this one and then just put it into here. There we go. And then you're going to take this part. And grease it. And take this one, the seal. or yeah, It's called a seal. It's not really sealing anything. There we go. And then you're going to take this spring. Uh, this spring, this type here is prone to corrosion. So just grease it like really good. Okay, and just put this one on. Uh, there's no specific uh, uh, orientation of this one. So just going to put that one on just like that. And then a little bit more grease inside here. And finally, you're going to take the cover. This cover right here. And the way you're going to put this one on is this one, you're going to flip it like this. I hope you can hear the clicking. All right. And then this one, just grease it. You don't have to put like a whole smear on it, but make sure it's well coated. <clears throat> and the two, two holes here will uh, go coincide with uh, the two holes there. So once you put it on, it shouldn't go out like this, as you can see. And then you're going to take these two screws right here. Right, and just put this one on like that and then you're gonna take a screwdriver and just oops, I'm just gonna screw it in tighten all the way but don't like uh, give it like a hard turn if you feel the resistance then just give it a little bit more turn just a little bit and there we have it for the knob easily done uh, one of the easiest design and it works pretty well for a real of this price range at least. And we're done with the knob and now we're going to do the... Oh, hold on. I forgot one more thing. This is the, the, another seal. And what you're going to do with this one is just going to grease it. You have to grease this seal. And then this one, just pop it into onto here. And then give it a good tug. And there we have it. So easily done. And we're going to set this one aside. And finally, for this segment, we're going to do the uh, spool. Uh, just be careful with any spring parts, uh, but it's not particularly hard to put on the spring, which I'll show you. Okay, so now we're going to do this one. Uh, first, we're going to put on the uh, clicker mechanism. And before we do that, just make sure you grease the screw hole. All right. And this is uh, not particularly hard. So this is the clicker mechanism. So it's going to have two uh, sides of the spring. This one is like uh, coiled, completely coiled, and this one is half coiled. So this part right here will have uh, the hook. So the hook one will sit like that, and the uh, coil, like sphere, like round coil will go onto this side. And the screw that will sit onto this side is this one. This one will have two screws. This is a half threaded screw. And the other screw is this one. Okay, so this one have Loctite, but for spool, you don't have to put on. But if you want to put Loctite, uh, it's fine. Just be careful as usual. And how I'm going to put this one on is... Oops. So it's going to sit like this. And this one. This side here, we go down like that. And I'm just going to put this one on first. And I'm going to take this screw. Right, good here, and the spring is working. Make sure you tighten it. 
I don't like give it like too much because if you give too much tightening the screw thread on both side the male and female screw thread will uh, uh, be uh, ruined and then you're gonna take this one right here just put this one on and this one will sit like this hold on I'm just gonna give it a little bit more greasing there we go this one we're gonna sit like this oh, hold on. So put this one onto here and make sure it sits onto the protruding area and then you're going to take the screw just put it in and then just give it a push until but be careful when you're pushing this because this is already having tension so it's gonna fly out if you're not careful there we go as you can see so be very careful just pull it until you feel that you're onto the screw hole and then put it on screw it in All right give it a little test and then you're going to tighten with flathead screwdriver and as usual don't tighten too much until you feel that little resistance and then just give it just a slightly a little bit more pressure and you are done with the clicker mechanism just going to grease everything up uh, you don't have to grease the whole uh, surface of the inside rotor but this is just how i do things i found that if you do this uh, if by any chance the salt go going to crystallize inside here it's going to crystallize onto the grease and when you're going to do cleaning the salt will wash out with the grease and yeah uh this is just how i do things if you don't want to do this this it's fine it's just another extra step that i do it's not mandatory and it's not necessary but if you want to do it it's fine and in fact i would highly recommend that you do this all right so we're good and finally we're going to put on the drag stack just going to grease this area right here if using if you're using different grease for the drag washer make sure you don't mix those two mixing a little bit is fine but don't mix too much because some grease is not compatible with one another okay anyways we're just gonna use this grease here first off you're gonna smear everything inside here there we go and then you're gonna take one uh, of the drag washers i'm not particularly fond of this type of design because uh, for other reels it's gonna have one metal washer with the ear kind of washer like this one uh, this is fiber so whenever there's going to be pressure onto the fiber and onto the metal frame uh, the pressure will shave off this ear on this carbon fiber washers so i really don't i'm not really fond of this kind of design uh, but pen chooses to do this uh, but for drags you're going to use around three to four maybe five kilograms it's fine above that this is not a really good design this washer is going to get destroyed like pretty fast and if that happens then it's gonna be not hard of a thing to find this kind of washer but then again for if you're gonna use this for heavy duty then this is not the type of washer that I would want to use but anyways it's there so just use it I'm just gonna put on more grease here and then you're gonna take one of these washers it's the same size uh, same thing and this is specialty washer <coughs> excuse me this is specialty washer just put it on and then you take grease and just put it on and this one and put on a little bit more and then finally this washer so all three metal washers is the same size so you don't have to worry too much and finally you're going to take this one uh, you, if you lose this or, or if this one breaks, you can easily make one with single strand wire. I think this is wire number 8 maybe. It's pretty pretty thick. I think it's number 8 or maybe more. So this one is easy. And as usual, if you have all spring parts, when you put it on, make sure your thumb, your fingers is always on the spring. This one will shoot out if you're not careful. Oops. There you go. Alright. Oh, it's a little bit of a problem. Alright, so, and we are good with the spool. Not uh, hard at all. And now we've done with all three, the handle, the drag knob, and spool. And we're going to go ahead with next the rotor.
Alright, so this is the rotor. Uh, pretty simple design, nothing complicated, but uh, be careful with all the seals. I've already broken one seal, which was on the uh, lifeliner system, the seal which is here. But from what I've read, if you open the seal, then the chances that you're going to break the rubber seal onto on here is almost guaranteed. So right now I'm waiting for not the ones from Pen. I just ordered uh, some from like a regular kind of uh, O-ring, which is the small type. And hopefully that one will fit. And yeah, so anyways, uh, be careful with all the seals. But if it breaks, then it, nothing much can be done. This is just how the seals are made. And anyway, so let's just begin. And this one, this C right here, sometimes you can remove it. Sometimes you don't. And it's, it's, in this case, it's uh, pretty hard to remove. Let's try to remove it. But if you're planning on removing this, uh, just make sure you have a backup one because you know, this one will break. And if you clean this one with... Uh, kerosene or any other, other corrosive cleaning agents then it's going to be much more prone to breaking uh, but anyways if you do that just make sure you grease it again and it should be fine most of the time at least but if you don't grease it then it's going to be become brittle much faster and you're going to have a whole lot of fun time if you're not in the US so anyways just grease this area uh, I would highly recommend that you use synthetic grease if you're going to grease all these seals okay just put this one on there we go nothing complicated at all and next for this side, uh, I cleaned the rotor with uh, kerosene. So now there's quite significant amount of paint that was stripped. But then again, the color is still black, which is good. But anyways, I'm just going to grease everything up. I'm just going to grease this one, the inside here. This step is not necessary. But as always, I would always, almost always will highly recommend that people do this. But then again, as I've always said, this is not necessary. Go. Then you're gonna take this one right here, just put it on to here, and then just put on grease, and we are good there. And next we're gonna take grease. Uh, for this part, uh, most of the time, if I do basic maintenance, I don't. I might open this just to take a look. If it's too dirty, then I'm just gonna clean it. Uh, most of the time, if I grease, like put a lot of grease, it should be fine for a year. Sometimes, in some reels, even two years. So the ones I'm going to do a lot of cleaning is usually the main body, but not the rotor. The rotor will be, will be almost always fine, even after 2 or 3 years. But the line roller will be needing servicing uh, more often. So for this part, usually I'm just going to grease like a whole bunch. And just leave it for a year, maybe 2 or 3. Because you don't have to uh, service this area as often as other areas. And then this part right here. You don't have to put a lot on this one, just make sure the... Uh, metal part is coated, well coated with grease, and you should be fine most of the time. Okay, so looks like we're good. And then you're going to take this rotor brick. I'm just going to put this one to here. There we go. Make sure it's greased. Okay, looks good. And then you're going to take this spring. Uh, this spring does not seem to have any uh, specific orientation or any specific position. So I'm just going to put a lot here and then I'm going to put even more onto the spring itself. And then you're going to take this part right here. This one will need greasing but don't put uh, a lot. You don't have to dunk this part in grease because the, screw, the grease will get stripped from this part over time. But then again you still have to grease it. Okay and next you take this bill arm. Put on grease onto any areas of interest. Okay, we put here, and now comes the quite fun part. And before we do that, make sure you pre-grease the screws. And make sure you grease here. Yep, we put there. And this one, be very careful. Uh, in order to do this correctly, put your thumb onto the spring because this one will shoot out if you're not careful. And this notch here, we go to this groove here, to the hole there. Okay, just put this one like this, and then give it a push. Be very careful. Give it a test. Make sure your thumb is still onto the spring and the. This thumb is also holding the bill arm. Give it a test. Right, feels good. And then you're going to take the screw. There we go. Usually for this part, I would prefer Philips head because flat head will be a little bit hard to manage. It's just uh, my preference is that when I do servicing, I prefer something holding it stably, having a stable hole onto the parts that I'm doing. 
Okay, so we're good here. Give it a test. Make sure your thumb is still onto the spring, but you don't have to put your thumb onto the bell arm anymore. Okay, as you can see, the rotor brake works and the mechanism also works. Oops. Okay, so there we go. This is fine. And next, take the cover. Grease the inside here. Not necessary, but when any parts that I do does not require too frequent servicing, I usually prefer that you grease the heck out of it. Grease the flamingo of it. And yep. Okay, just put on the cover. This one easily done. Nothing complicated at all. Take this screw. You're gonna, not going to mistake this screw for other screws, I think. There we go. And then, oops. And then, just screw it in. Once you feel the resistance, so. And then you're going to tighten with flat head. Okay. One more test. And there we go. Easily done. Not too complicated. And next, you're going to take this part right here. Okay. Grease the screw hole. Grease this side here. And you need to grease the inside here because this part will collect salt. Uh, sometimes uh, some servicemen will not prefer that you grease this area because since this one collects salt, if you put more grease, then it will collect salt even more. But from my experience, if you put grease, yes, it will collect salt. But uh, the salt will be much easier to be removed. But then again, if you put more grease, make sure you do like a regular uh, servicing and maintenance schedule. Because even though the grease will protect the surface from salt, if you let it for quite some time, the salt will still creep into the metal area. And it will be not good. If you're in the US, parts will be easy to get outside of it. Uh, well, I do notice that nowadays, after COVID, uh, like pen, Okuma, and Daiwa parts are quite a problem to get. Not like a huge one, but nowadays it's becoming huge. Like Daiwa is becoming much worse with the day. Pen is also becoming bad. Okuma. If you're in the US, as usual, if you're in the US, it's pretty easy, but outside of it, you're gonna have. Uh, right now, it's becoming a problem. It's becoming bigger every day, so yeah, just be careful. Make sure you do good maintenance, and you should be you should not be needing parts too soon or too often. Hopefully, that is okay. Just screw this one in. Okay, if you feel resistance, stop. And then give it a test, and then you can you can tighten it all the way, but don't push too much. You're gonna break the ruin the screw thread. Okay, so we're good here. Feels good. And finally, you're gonna do the line roller. And now we're gonna put on this side here. Make sure you grease this like lightly because we already have quite a lot. Okay, just put this one like this. Give it a spin, and you are good. And now just grease this area. Uh, I would prefer that you put a lot of grease. This is very prone to collecting salts, and the bearing. Won't last long. Well, any in any uh, any line roller, even the sealed one, like one stall, the like really tightly sealed one, when stalls are those are, you're gonna have problem with the line roller over time. Okay, and we're good here. And for this part, uh, I've mentioned in the teardown video that this reel will have two side. The line roller will have two side. The side where the surface is higher angle, and this one will be lower. So the lower one will sit this side, and the higher one will sit onto this side. And before we do put it on, make sure you grease. Uh, this will make the line roller a little bit tacky, but it will have much better protection. There we go. And the higher side will have the bushing. So just put this one on. Uh, the bushing will fit onto one side, it will not fit onto the other side. So you're not going to mistake both, but uh, what people will usually be mistaken is the position so sometimes people will put the higher side here but the higher side should sit this side okay and just put this one on there we go and then you're gonna take this bearing okay and then just put this one on give it a push give it a little bit of oil oh, a little too much but it's fine put on grease it's fine you put on a lot here because uh, this one will be uh, exposed to salt water much more often and then you can take this one right here so this one will have the side that is like that protruding side so the protruding side will go in and the flat side will go into this side and then finally you're just gonna put this one on and you're gonna take this screw you're not gonna mistake this screw for other screws and it's gonna have this spacer which have the same teethy mark so this one just puts onto the screw
There we go. And as usual with this part, make sure you grease it finely. There we go. All right, and next we're just gonna put the screw on. Give it a good uh, tightening, but be careful as usual. Once you feel the resistance stop, so there's the resistance, give it a test. Okay, so it's getting good. And next you're gonna tighten it all the way. There it goes. Okay, thankfully this is hardened steel screw, so it's not gonna get stripped pretty easily. All right, so it's spinning, and we are done with the rotor. All right, so it's a uh, simple design, uh, robust enough for a wheel of this size. Oh, it's just gonna put a little bit of grease onto the surface. We're gonna wipe away uh, the grease, but just make sure that there's a light coating on the surface. Just a light coating will do, don't have to be too much with this one right here. Okay, so we're good with this uh, rotor, so easily done, not complicated at all. In fact, this is one of those uh, rotor that is one of the easiest to maintain, in my books at least. Okay, so we're done with the rotor, and next, uh, I think we're gonna reassemble this piece here first, the lifeliner system. Unfortunately, uh, I ripped the uh, rubber seal on this side, so I have to wait. So this video is gonna... I was planning to put on this video before February, but looks like uh, the seal will take some time, so this one will go out on sometime in February uh, 2023. Alright, so next will be uh, the lifeliner system. Okay, so now we're going to do the main body, uh, but before we begin, uh, there are a few things that I need to note. Uh, number one is that uh, for the main body of this reel and other Pen Spin Fisher VI reels of size uh, 5005 and above, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the whole reel or the assembly will be involving uh, the main shaft. So uh, if I do another Pen Spin Fisher VI of that size in the future, uh, the main body reassembly will not be involving any main shaft. Because in order to put on uh, the main shaft, you have to put on the rotor first. Because this particular reel is designed like that. So just to note that. And secondly, it's about this bearing. The pinion bearing and the side bearing for both the main body and the uh, lifeliner side plate. Uh, all four of them is of the same size. So I'm just going to give you the measurement right now. Okay, so this is the bearing for both, for all uh, the pinion gear. Uh, this bo main body plate and the lifeliner side plate, it's all same size. So the size is 17. It says it's 16, but it's 17. 17. 9. Okay, 17, 9, and 5. So 9, 17, and 5. So all of this bearing is same. So if you're going to change this bearing to a new one, that's the measurement for all four. Two on the pinion, one on the uh, main body plate, and one on the lifeliner side plate. Okay, and uh, I think that's it. So let's just begin. And before we do that, uh, there are many parts that need uh, prior assembling. So I'm just going to do just that. And this is the uh, rear cap. Oops, rear cap. So this cap have two seals, which is this one, these two. So let's just grease this. Uh, for this part, usually I'm just going to grease it like a lot. And I won't be uh, servicing it or maintaining it for maybe a few years before I open this one back. Okay, so anyways, we put on the grease. And then you take this seal right here. Nothing special. For most part, I will try not to open this seal up. I'm not, I will try not to tear down the seal. But for this video, I accidentally pulled this one out. So I'm just going to put it on back. It's a little bit hard, but not like too hard. And if you tear this seal, you have to order one from Pen. There's no aftermarket uh, seal that have the same size as this one. Okay, just push it. Make sure it's in the groove. Yep, 
is good. It's a little bit hard to get it inside its groove, but like not like too hard, but then again, yeah, you get the idea. And then this seal, uh, this seal is very prone to tearing. I've mentioned in Rotor this uh, reassembling that I accidentally tear this side, uh, the seal on this side, which uh, I'm not going to order from pen. So I'm just going to try and buy uh, like regular O-ring, which, uh, which are sold in boxes of a few hundred pieces. Uh, I'm not sure if it will fit, but I'm still waiting for it to arrive. So until then, I cannot finish the reassembling video of this wheel. Okay, so there we go. And just squeeze it back. And we are good here. So we're just going to set this one aside. And next, this side cap, which is going to sit here. Or if you're going to position the handle on this side, it's going to sit here. So it's compatible on both sides. As you can see here, this one also fits. There we go. And for this one, it's the same thing. Just squeeze it. And for this side cap, usually I will not be servicing this very often. Maybe once in every two, three, maybe four years. As needed. But then again, you have to re-grease it. So, because this seal will be dependent on the oil and grease to make sure it's not brittle. Okay, so this is the seal. And this one, pretty straightforward. But just be careful when you're dealing with seal as usual. Do not rush. And take your time. This is going to be a little bit hard. There we go. Okay, let's give it a little bit of test to see. Alright, that's good. Okay, so we're good here. And next, uh, it's better if we put on the rear drag system first, but I think for this one, I'm just going to put on this bearing first. And as usual, grease any areas that will contain the seal, but uh, for this reel, and for any saltwater reel, I will grease the entirety of the body, of the inside, make sure it's well coated. Because from my own uh, experience, on all the reels I do this, they did last much longer without any salt corrosion or rusting in some cases. But again, it's up to your personal preference if you want to do this. If you are okay with greasing the inside, then go ahead and proceed. If you feel that it's not needed, like it's a mundane thing to do, then by all means, uh, don't do it. So this is all up to the personal preference of everyone. Okay, and next you're going to take this seal. So this is the seal. So this one's going to sit down. And make sure you dab grease onto the seal. This seal will need grease, so don't uh, be skimp with it. Not too much, and then again, not too little. Okay, bring this one right here. So this one's going to sit down. This side's going to sit up, and this one's position is going to go down. So there we go, just like that. Easily done. Give it a good press. Okay, and then you're going to take this uh, bearing. Uh, hold on, that's the bearing. Where's the other bearing? So that's one, two... Um, okay, give me a few seconds. Okay, so this. There we go. So that's three. So either bearing is fine, uh, because all uh, the pinion and the plate bearing is same size. And then this one, you're going to need a little bit of push, because the tolerance is pretty tight. There we go. Feels good. Okay, give it a spin, and feels good. Next, you take oil. What I'm using right now is sewing machine oil mixed with Corrosion X. Uh, the ratio I think is uh, 2 or 3 of this oil and 1 of the Corrosion X oil. I've used this for, for a few years now, so it works fine for my purpose at least. Oops. There we go. So make sure the seal is in good shape. Make sure it's not misshapen. There we go. Alright, that's good. And next, we're going to put on the three screws, which will hold this bearing. So these are the screws. It's pretty small, pretty uh, not flimsy, but I think you're not going to mistake this screw for other screws. And then again, just be careful. 
Okay, so there will be three screws. One here. Do not tighten yet. So for now, just put it on until you feel the resistance and then stop. One here. Until you feel the resistance and then immediately stop. Uh, if you remember, the two screws on this side is has its head stripped from the factory, though, so there's nothing much can be done about it. All right, there we go. And next, we're going to tighten it. So when you're tightening it, give it a good push and a good twist, but don't twist too much because if you do it too much, the thread, the male and female thread, will get blasted. So just give it like a screwing like more than usual but not too much and we're good here and I'm just gonna grease the surface okay so we're good here and next way I think it's better if I do the main gear first so this main gear will need these three parts uh, I, I hope I'm doing this right uh, okay uh, for now we're gonna grease the whole gear but for now I'm just gonna grease the parts where this three piece will go on to so don't have to do like a lot of greasing but then again you have to grease there we go and first off we're going to take this piece this spring piece hopefully you can see this so this one will have the hook upside and this notch here will also go upside so that's this notch here we'll go to this area here and when you're putting on this spring it's going to need uh, quite a few handling good handling because this spring, the, it has the groove that it will sit. So just make sure you put this one into the space there. And then just gently push it in slowly. Do not rush. And there we go. We're good here. And next you're going to take this piece. So uh, this one will have its own uh, position. But for the top position, it's going to be, it's going to feel a little bit curvy. And the bottom position may feel a little bit flat than the upside. And this hole here is where... This hook here is going to sit, but to do this correctly, there we go, I hope you can see in the camera, we're just going to put it like that, and what you need to do is to twist it until it goes like that. There we go. For now it's a little bit tacky, it's to be expected because this grease is like really tacky, but once we put all, it's going to be smooth. Uh, it's important that you put all because uh, this reel is like very well sealed. But if salt water does go in, it will go in over time because the seal with all the seals will disting, disintegrate over time. If you put grease, then the chances are that the salt collected will not be uh, corroding uh, the parts. There we go. So now it's much more there. But then again, as usual, uh, greasing is totally up you, to your personal preference. It's just the way I do things. I prefer things well greased. If you don't like the way I'm doing, then just don't put grease. If you don't put grease, you definitely need to put oil. So remember that. All right. So now we're going to put on the clip. Oh, not this one. Hold on. There we go. This is the E-clip. So there's only one of the size in this reel. So just put it on like that and then give it a good push. And there we have it. And the issue with the tackiness, just put oil. And give it. There we go. There we go. Now it's smooth. And we are done with the gear. So the, the gear will also be set aside. And uh, yeah, while we were at it, I'm just going to put on the three washers, the gear washers. So the gear washers will have three. Some reels will have two. Some reels will have four. I think some of them will have five. It will depend on the production. And for this uh, washers, this is the bronze colored one, so the bronze one will go in first. We'll go on first, in or on, I think both are right. And then just push it, and then you take this stainless steel one, and you just put it on just like that. And finally, the bronze, I think it's copper, but I'm not so sure. Okay, so we're done with the main gear, and we're going to set this one aside as well. And next, we're going to put on the uh, rear drag system. So the way it's going to sit, it's like this. And remember, this one washer, which have like, uh, it's a mixture of, uh, it, like it has the carbon uh, washer glued onto the stainless steel washer. So this one will sit at this uh, arrangement. 
There we go. And this one will go in between. Oh, let's give it more. There we go. And it's going to sit just like that. So just remember the position. Not really like a hard thing to do. Just remember this. the first washer that's going to go in is the one with the uh, carbon washer sandwiching uh, stainless steel washer. And this one is going to be this washer. It has the square shape. And this washer is round in and out. And now we're going to put it on. And for carbon fiber washers, I would highly recommend that you put this one on with uh, dried grease. But for this instant, I'm just going to use the regular grease. Dried grease is designed to handle extreme pressure and extreme temperature. This grease is not for extreme temperature, but it can handle extreme pressure. Uh, but the rear uh, drag, I'm not going to be using much, so this grease will be sufficient, in my opinion at least. Okay, and then you take this piece right here, and first off, you're going to grease it as well. Okay, and next, we're going to put this one in. So this one will have the space where the clip will sit, and this one will go in first. There we go. And next, you're going to take this clip. You can make one with single strand wire, but with this kind of clip, I would highly recommend that you take good care of it. Okay, there we go. Just put it on just like that. And this one will require pushing. There we go. So it is in. And a little bit of oil here. And inside. Just a few drops. Make sure it's spinning without too much resistance. There we go. And next we're going to take this piece. This is the copper piece. And it one, this one will have the longer side and the shorter side. So the shorter side will go down. And the shorter side will sit. I hope you can see this in the camera. There's a notch. There's a space for the this side here. Oops. Okay. A little bit of grease. And it's going to sit like this. So just make sure it's positioned good. Okay, so there we go. I think it's good. And oh, this is not the correct position actually. It's actually like this. There we go. And next, we're gonna put this one on. This is the uh, same size. And this flat piece here, flat side, it will sit into the area according to the shape. Oh, it's not. Incorrectly. All right, there we go. It's in properly. Oops. Oh, hold on. The copper plate is okay. So there we go. Okay, we're good. And next, we're gonna take this washer. Remember, this one have the carbon fiber sandwiching, uh, sandwiching the uh, uh, stainless steel. Okay, give it a good grease and then put it on. Next, this piece here, same position. There we go. Next, this piece. And just put it on, just like that. Easily done. Nothing complicated at all. Next, I'm going to take this piece here, and as usual, if I've said before, grease it thoroughly and not too much. Okay, and this one will go in like this. Okay, this one will be a little bit challenging to put on, but it's not like something too hard to do. Just make sure you're doing it correctly and it should be fine. Okay, it's not properly in yet, so it should go all the way in. Okay, we've done one uh, hurdle and we, we still need to take these teeth here into the clicker teeth. Uh, 
There we go. All right, now we're game. Okay, that took uh, a little bit more time than I anticipated. So it's not easy putting these parts on, but it has to be done. And next we're going to take this washer. This is straightforward. Just put it on just like that. And then you're going to take this one, the uh, ear washer. And the ear washer, we're going to sit to the uh, notch, four notch there. And we're good. And finally, we're going to put on this one. And remember, this one will require the key. <clears throat> but if you have this kind of plier, usually it's not too big of a problem. There we go. Okay, and we're going to take the shaft and give it a little test. There we go, feels good. And let's tighten a little bit more. The more you tighten, the more the drag will be stronger. There we go. And we are done with the rear drag. And finally, we're just going to take this one. You can put it on now or you can put it on later. But for now, I'm just going to put it on now to get this one out of the way. And be sure to grease it before you screw this one in. There we go, we're going to tighten uh, later. And next, you're going to take this one, as usual, grease it, and then just screw this one in. And we are done with the rear drag. A little bit of a drama, but thankfully not too much of a problem. <clears throat> Now we're going to put on the oscillation gear. And this one is also not hard at all, just grease it. And you take this on. So as you can see, it's already like not in good shape and it's to be expected. This is not like a particularly strong material. So this one, just put this on like that. And give it a good grease. Uh, when you're putting this one on the first time, it will be tacky. And make sure this area here is well greased because this area will trap salt over time. And then you're going to just take this one and just... Oh, hold on. I forgot. That's a bushing. That should go. And the bushing will go in just like that. And this one will go in just like this. And there we go. It's tacky for now. It's tacky. And then you're going to take this screw here. So this is uh, the screw for the oscillation gear. You're not going to mistake in this screw for other screws. And then just screw this in. Tight. Okay, it's tacky and it's to be expected. And what you need to do is just to take oil with solvent and just drizzle it. There we go. Now it feels much lighter. Hold on. Oops, oh, this is. I think the spacer is causing. Yep, it's the spacer which is causing this problem. Hold on, let's try and flip it. Okay, I think this should be fine now, I think, hopefully. Alright, it's good now. Okay, now it feels good. Still a little bit tacky to my taste. A little bit too tacky because this one should spin nicely without too much uh, tackiness. But we're gonna uh, remedy it afterwards. Let's just try. Okay, it doesn't feel too bad actually. So, okay, and we are good there. And next, uh, we're gonna put on the pinion. And the first rule in pinion gear is that you don't grease the inside. So for now, just put on the grease, but don't put like too much. Okay, and then you're going to take one of this bearing. Put it in. Oil. And then you're going to take the entire reverse uh, bearing. And But first, I think it's better if you put this one on. This is the sleeve. 
just put on the sleeve any uh, side will <coughs> will be fine okay put on the sleeve and next you put on the entire reverse bearing make sure you oil it give it a spin do not grease the inside of uh, the entire reverse bearing and next we're going to take <coughs> excuse me this one right here and then you're going to take this bearing sleeve grease the inside and then just push one bearing in and then oil it there we go feels good <coughs> oh my throat is not really cooperating okay and then you're going to take this one and grease the inside here there will be no bearing here no support bearing no sleeving no bushing okay and then just push it in and then you're going to take this one this one also the same thing oh, oh flip it just push this one in there we go and then you're going to take this washer put it on there we go and next you're gonna grease this area here the screw holes not necessary it's just the way i always do things and next we're gonna take this one right here this is the seal give it a uh, good greasing and uh, this one i think will sit like this no, this side. no so it's gonna sit this side there we go it's gonna sit like this and this one will go on to here there we go make sure it's well greased and now we're just gonna put this one on just like that okay and um, do we have to put this one on first no we can put this one later and you're just gonna take these three screws okay and then just screw it in easily done okay just put it on do not tighten yet Okay, and now we're going to tighten the screws. I think we can use the same screwdriver. Okay, good. Just a little bit more than usual. There we go. Give it a spin and see if things are working well. If it feels like sticky. Yeah, it feels good, I think. Yep, feels good. And finally, we're going to put on this one right here. This is the emergency... Uh, Entire reverse. Okay, what you need to do is grease it. You can like disassemble this one, but uh, I won't be doing the disassembling. It's too much of a work, really. But if you dunk this one in salt water, then you have to do it. You just have to give it a little bit of tuck and then just pull the white uh, thing out. And off, off goes with the spring, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave it as is. And now we need to put on the this one right here. This is plastic so you don't have to worry uh, too much and this is a spring it's very thin so be very careful extra careful than usual okay there we go this one will sit just like that not a hard thing there we go and next we're going to take this one and Hopefully you can see this. So this one is going to be just like this. Okay, there we go. The spring is in. You can see this is how it works. And next you're going to take this clip. If you lose this, just buy a whole buck of it. It's like just a few ringgits or a few US dollar cents. There we go. And next you're going to take this one right here. So it will sit like that 
and this is how it works. Give it a good oiling. Although I have to admit it feels a little bit uh, tacky, but we'll see when we're gonna reassemble everything. For now it feels fine. For now. For now it feels good. The entire reverse is working. And let's try and put on the rotor and give it a spin. Okay, I think we're good. So that's it for the uh, reassembling of this part. Uh, took a little bit of time, more time than I was hoping it would. But as you can see, it's not like too hard to do. Just be careful with this side because it's pretty hard to push everything in. Other than that, everything is fine and shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, so we're done here. And next we're gonna reassemble the uh where was it yes the uh lifeline side plates and this one i won't unfortunately i ripped the uh, seal on this side so i'm just gonna wait until the seal arrives and this video will be in youtube in early february i was hoping before 5th of february all right Okay, so now we're going to do the lifeliner system, the lifeliner side plate. And before we begin, uh, it's important to note that this bearing is the same as the bearing on the uh, entire reverse, uh, on the pinion gear and on the body side plate. So it's the same size, but I'm just going to give you the measurement anyways. So this is 17, 9, and five so nine seventy and five so it's the same measurement as the bearings on the pinion gear and on the body and now we're going to first uh, grease the body you can skip this part it's not necessary and it's not compulsory but it's just the way i do things i prefer that i grease everything because uh, all the reels i've done i found that when i do this then the chances are that the reels gonna be much worse on every uh, servicing session will be much significantly less Okay, so you don't have to be like uh, overly uh, too much, overly greased. A little bit is fine. If you want to put more, it's fine, not a problem. And now we're going to grease this seal. So this seal will sit into here. All right, make sure it's properly seated. And next we're gonna take this one. Right here, and now we're just gonna put this one on, just like this, make sure the orientation is correct. All right, and make sure the seal is properly seated. So if it's a little bit warped, just push it and it should be fine. And now you're going to take this bearing and just going to put it in. Uh, remember that the tolerance is pretty tight on this reel. So you might have to push much more compared to other reels. And next you're just going to oil it. And then you're going to take this screw. The camera stop focusing right. Hold on. Okay, so that's a screw. Uh, this screw is the same as on the uh, body for the bearing. And also for these two screws, it's also the same size. So you can exchange it with one another, not a problem. And now we're just gonna put the screws on. Uh, nothing hard really, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it does not cooperate very well. So when that happens, just have to do it one by one. And remember the screw was uh, pretty tight when I opened it during dismantling. So we're just gonna do the same. But for now, first off, we're just gonna put it on, screw it in to make sure it's in properly. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to tighten it. There we go. You have to like tighten it a lot, but don't push too much until you're going to uh, ruin the screw head. So just a little bit is enough. You feel the slight resistance, and then you're going to turn it a little bit more. After that, it should be, it should be fine most of the time, really. 
All right, and next uh, we're done with the bearing, and next we're gonna put on this one right here. So this is the uh, the uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but this is the part, and this is the um, the spring. And now I'm just gonna put it on, but be careful because the spring is pretty tight. So there we go. It's not a hard thing to do. Just be careful. And next you're gonna grease the area where this part will sit. You. After this, you're going to grease a lot, but for now, you don't have to grease like too much, just for now, at least. And next, you're going to put this one on, just like this. So make sure it sits like that. And next, you're just going to put this one on. From now, we're just going to screw it on. You don't have to do anything yet. Oops. There we go. And now, we're just going to screw it on. Take one of the screw. And now just put it on. Don't tighten all the way yet. Now I'm gonna take this one right here, just gonna push it until it sits like that. And next I just gonna grease it again. And next you're gonna take this one right here. So this one will sit here. So you can see that there's two notch there. So that's the two notches for where this side will sit. And next you're just gonna put the screw on there we go and now you can tighten everything up there we go give it a test make sure it works properly there we go and it works fine and next you're gonna take this one right here I'm just gonna grease it for now you don't have to grease too much but just make sure that all the nooks and crannies are greased especially this side because this is this part that here is where this not sure, gonna slide. Okay, next just put this one on. For now, you just have to put it on. For now, so you're just gonna put on like this. Hopefully, you can see this in the camera, in the video. And next, uh, you're gonna grease this part a little bit more. And then you're gonna take this screw. And now, I'm just gonna screw this on. There we go, and we're gonna tighten it. There we go. So this is how it's going to ride. So whenever you're gonna pull push the lever, so this one will slide, and there we go. That is how it's gonna be moving. So on this part right here, there's uh, a notch for every level of the lever. So there's a total of five, including the free, the free position. So this is the fifth. The first position where there's no drag and then it's going to progress to one two three and four after that when you're going to push it you're going to free it it's going to be at that position all right hope that things that clear things out and this gear here it will ride onto the gear at the bottom so whenever you're gonna pull the lever so this part will move and then when you're gonna reel the handle so this main gear will move and then it's going to catch this one it's just going to pull the lever system the left and the system free so that's how it works not too complicated uh, if i say so myself but anyways now i'm just going to go to this part grease this part right here and next you're going to take this spring okay and this spring this notch right here it's going to slide into here Okay, and next you're gonna what you're gonna do with this one? Uh, yeah, just we're just gonna put it on. So this is the position. Make sure you don't uh, mistaken it for other position. So this one's gonna sit like this. Oops, this is not the correct position. Hold on. Oops, sometimes it's slippery because all the grease. All right, so that is how it's gonna sit. So just remember this position. For now, we're not going to position the spring just yet, for now, because we're going to do it later. And next, we're going to flip this, and then you're going to take this seal. Now, this seal is already f up, so nothing much can be done. Uh, this seal is very prone to tearing uh, most of the time. If you're going to open this reel, uh, the chances that you're going to tear the seal is like almost certain. And this is not cheap. This is not like a $4 thing, if I'm not mistaken, on the Mystic Parts, if I'm not mistaken. $4 for this tiny seal. So I tried to order from Pure Fishing, but they do not honor uh, personal 
uh, parts replacement, as, at least in my country, uh, in America, US, or South Africa, I'm not sure. So what I did was, is that I just bought this seal. This is the, like the regular rubber seal you, you can buy in uh, eBay, AliExpress, and stuff. So it's like really cheap. The measurement for this one is 1mm thickness and 4mm inside diameter, if I'm not mistaken. So I've tested it. This one works. So just use it. Just use what you can. You don't have to be too particular about it. Okay, just put it on. Make sure it's in properly. All right, and next we're going to take this part right here. We're going to grease inside here and here. Now we're just going to put this one on. So this is the first position. So it's going to be like this. Hold on, let's see. There we go. This one sometimes is a little bit too tricky. Sometimes, not all the time. But anyways, uh, just going to put it on. For now, we're just going to screw it to make sure it's in place. And then we, we're we going to reposition it. So just screw it in. Don't tighten all the way. All right. Now we feel the uh, parts go in. Next, we're going to reposition it. Make sure it's inside the the hole there. It's inside the groove on the on this part right here. So make sure it's in. And when it's in, tighten everything up. All right. And there we have it. And we're not done yet. So for now, we're just going to test it. All right. So make sure it's working properly. There we go. So this is the free position. And then it's going to go to first, second, third, and fourth position. So the fourth position is like this. And now we're just going to free it. And in order to put on this spring onto this part right here, you have to put the lever on the fourth position. And what you need to do is just to take this spring and just it's going to require a little bit of force and this one just gonna oops sometimes it's a little bit hard sometimes not all the time okay, i'm just gonna use this one i think this will be much easier yep, there we go all right and it goes in like that and let's give it a push and as you can see now it works fine i'm just gonna test it one two three four now this is free position and make sure when it's in free position, this is the position of the this part right here. So it's going to go like this. And then um, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright, that's it. And we're done with this part. Uh, not too complicated, thankfully. I was uh, expecting it to be much more complicated, but thankfully it's not too complicated. And now that this part is fine, and next we're going to reassemble the whole wheel. And now we're going to reassemble the whole reel. And uh, nothing much to do actually, just gonna put everything up. But uh, remember that this reel is a little bit different from other reel, as, uh, especially on this size, Pen Spin Fisher size 5500 and above. Uh, in order to remove the spool, you have to remove uh, the side plate and shaft. So whenever we're gonna reassemble it back, we're just gonna follow the same path. And I forgot to put on the shaft in the uh, prior video where I show everything. So this is the shaft. And we're not going to put this one yet because the first thing that we need to put on is actually the rotor. And uh, yeah, nothing much to do. And we're just going to put uh, grease where everything sits. And hold on, seems like this seal here is uh, stuck because I did a little test before. So the seal here is supposed to be here. So in order to do this correctly, you have to put the seal here and then you put on this, the rotor onto the body. And yep. Now what we need to do is just to put on the rotor. This is pretty straightforward, nothing special, uh, anything needed. And we're just going to take this one, the nut, you grease this area, and grease this area, and down here. And before we put on the nut, we have to put on this one right here. So this one, just put it on just like that, give it a push. Oh, hold on. There we go. Hopefully you can see this in the video. And then you put on the nut, this is the side. And this one goes in clockwise. 
and number 15 wrench or 15 millimeter wrench uh in the us it's gonna be i don't know half inch wrench maybe not so sure all right and then just gonna tighten it up but not too much when you feel the resistance you give it just a little bit more push and it should be fine and next you're gonna take this seal right here okay and the seal is gonna sit like that give it a push make sure it's properly seated it's gonna be a little bit uh flexible because uh it's important that this seal is not clean with kerosene or anything because it will like flex and it will become larger so as you can see here the seal is like it's not fitting properly which happens all the time yes, but we're still gonna put it on as best as we can as we can and then you're gonna take this one right here just gonna grease this and then just gonna put this one on like this all right Oh, looks like we need to tighten this a little bit more. There we go. I think this should be fine. Hold on. Okay, we're just going to reposition this one back on. There we go. So we're going to put this one on. Alright, so there we go. So... That is how it should be sitting. And next, we're going to take these three screws. These three screws is the same size. And just going to put it on uh, one by one. And for the initial screwing in, you're just going to put it on and don't tighten yet. Because we're going to tighten everything up later. There are days that this cooperates well and there are days that it's not cooperating as well as intended all right there we go finally this screw oops Okay, so now that everything's in, now we can tighten it, but you don't have to tighten too much. You just tighten until you feel like that slight resistance. Okay, then you're good. Alright, looks good. Now that the rotor is on, now we can put on the shaft. And in order to put on the shaft, first off, you have to position this notch here to the back most. Like that. Okay, and now we're going to put on the seal first. Make sure we don't forget this and make sure you grease a little bit not too much and then you're going to take this seal just gonna put it on and make sure it sits into the groove it's already have its own position where this it's gonna sit and make sure it's inside the groove of the seal all right and next we're gonna take this shaft right here just gonna oh no not the shaft yet we have to put the oscillation block first so the block needs grease inside here just put a good amount and just put it on like this hopefully you can see this in the camera there we go and next you're gonna take this shaft any position is fine there's no fixed position just gonna put it on a little bit of oil not too much and make sure this one goes in all right there we go all right, make sure you position the shaft so that these two notch here sits exactly in the middle like that. And next you're gonna grease this. And then you take this one, just put it on like that, and then give it a push down and reposition, make sure the screw holds there. And then you're gonna take the screw and you're just gonna screw it in. Okay, and there we go with this part. As you can see, not overly complicated. Okay, give me a few seconds. All right, and uh, now that we're good here, and next we're gonna put on the side cover. And before we put it on, uh, make sure you grease the spring. This spring in particular, because if you don't grease it, uh, whenever you're gonna engage the lever, there will be a loud ting ting sound. Uh, so in order to dampen the sound, it won't go away, but you can dampen the sound. You just have to put on grease onto the spring and it should be fine. 
Okay, that's good. All right, give it a few clickety click. Okay, we're good here. And make sure you position this uh, at the free position. And have this one ready as well. Because now we're going to put this one on. Not like a hard thing to do. So just going to put it on. And make sure this one goes all the way. So as you can see, it's not going all the way. If it does not go in all the way, make sure you reposition it. Because it should go all the way. And this time it's a little bit uh, tricky. Let's give it one more test and see. Oh. Okay, sometimes you need to position the rotor. Uh, hopefully you can see this in the video here. So you have to position until it's uh, at the, this one is like nothing here. Because if you put it on like this, so the, this one right here will not go in. So in order to do this correctly, you have to position it until it goes like that. And put it on, and there you have it. Okay, so now we're just going to put on the screws. So we'll start off with this four. So the initial screwing, you have to put it on and then you screw it in uh, until you feel the small resistance and then stop and don't tighten it yet. So now we're just going to screw it in. Sometimes it will be a little bit uh, hard to screw in. Sometimes, not all the time. Which in this case, uh, this one is a little bit hard. So we're going to come to that later. Okay. Okay, that shouldn't be too much of a problem actually. Okay, so I'm just gonna screw this one in. So this one is a little bit harder than the rest. Okay, so now it's becoming much easier. Okay, now we feel the resistance. Okay, it's good, feels good. Okay. Okay, give it a test, make sure it's not too tight and it feels good. Now we're gonna tighten everything with a flat head. Give it a twist until you feel like it's come to the stop, but don't go in too much. This body is metal, so it should be fine, but from my experience you shouldn't screw you shouldn't tighten the screw or any screws too much on an efficient reel. And give it a test. Yep, feels good. And now we can put this side on, and this side also will have one seal. So just grease this area, and grease this area, and grease this screw hole. And you're gonna take this seal. If you, uh, by accident, accident, uh, tear up this one, you can use the same that I used, the black one on this side to this side. It's pretty cheap, you can buy it like a whole buck for like just a few ringgit, a few dollars. And it should last you quite a lot of time. It will last you a lifetime actually. So it's pretty cheap, but if you want to buy the original one, this is $4 for this small seal, which is ridiculous. But nothing much can be done. I'm not a really big fan, uh, big fan of pen reels anyway. Because for me, with any reels, I would prefer reels that have good after sales service. And the most important part of after sales service is uh, parts availability. So for reels that are pretty hard to get any parts, I just not going to recommend them anyways. Like Ryobi, now I used to recommend it, but nowadays not really, not as much. Parts are becoming much worse to get to the point that it's really frustrating. Daiwa is still pretty good, but some parts it's like impossible in Akuma, in Malaysia at least. Uh, right now, just not gonna bother with Akuma, but I still service them anyways. Okay, so we're good here and give it a test. There we go. There we go. Alright, it feels a little bit tight. Let's go to the fourth position. Okay, feels good. And there's one more thing that you should be testing, but we're gonna to come to that later. For now, just gonna grease this area. I've already put this one uh, before this, but I just uh, remove it to show you guys that you can put this one later without putting on the uh, side plate. So it's gonna tighten it really good. And next, you're gonna take this side cap, which I also put on in the uh, first body reassembling. So I just remove it, but now we're just, we're just gonna put it on back. And just tighten this one really good. Okay, so there we go. And next, we're gonna put on the spool. And you're just gonna take this spool shims. Just gonna put it on. 
Oops. Okay, let's just press it. There we go. I'm actually going to take this seal. Remember to grease this. Don't have to grease like particularly too much. And then I'm just going to reposition this one. Okay, so there we go. And now comes the critical part, which is the testing of the drag. This part is, I couldn't emphasize more. This is really important because you have to test to make sure that the front work and the back works as well. There we go. Now we're just going to put it on. Now, for now, we're just going to test the front. So this is the front drag. It should sound like this. And next, we're going to test the rear drag. Rear drag should sound like that. And it should be like, Becoming stronger with each progression. So, uh, for the last position, in order for the rear drag to work, the front drag must be stronger than the rear drag. If it's li lighter, for now I'm just going to untighten it. So this drag will not uh, work. Uh, you can hear that the front drag works, but the rear drag is not working. But if you tighten it to the point that the front drag is stronger than the rear drag, that it works. And then give it a test. And when it's in free position, you also have to make sure that the rear drag is not working. In order to test it, you're just going to test it like the position as how the line go the line's going out and the position where the line's not moving. So in some cases, when you counter the spool position, it still sounds. If that happens, then uh, what you need to do is to open the uh, lifeline system again and reposition it to the position that I showed you in the previous segment where I uh, reassemble the site, uh, the lifeliner system. Uh, if you, if in, if it's in pre-position and you test it, counter the spool position, if it's not moving, then it is good. But if it starts to move, then there's something wrong with the lifeliner system. Just open it up and reposition everything to how I showed you and should be fine. And now everything's looking fine. Nothing else to do now. Just gonna put on the handle. And let's give it a test. Yep, feels good and smooth. And let's slice this one once more. So as you, as you can see, when I engage the rear drag, this pole will spin both sides. It spins this side and it spins this side. If I, I engage this, but if I free it, so it's not going to spin this side, it's only going to spin this side. Okay, so hope that helps. I'm just going to give it a little bit of wipe, wipe and I'll come back. And there you have it for Pen Spin Fisher VI 6500 Lifeliner Reel. Uh, the rear construction is not as complicated I was thinking it would be uh, but just be mindful that if you're gonna service the lifeline and side plates uh, there is a certain way of doing things and if you don't do it correctly then you're gonna have a quite an interesting uh, time ahead of you but anyways this is a solid reel uh, I think that Pence did a really great job with this reel but however uh, as I've always mentioned uh, part of the reel's appeal is the after sales maintenance after sales service which is a parts availability is a huge part in how I rate any fishing reel uh, pen fishing reels like any pure fishing uh, products, any pure fishing brands like Pen, Abu and anything else uh, they are really good, really good reels but in terms of after sales service uh, they are only really good in the US South Africa maybe and Australia outside of that countries, outside of that region it's gonna be not very good and in my case in Malaysia some parts are really hard to get and it takes too long like really long like six months and two a year is like pretty normal and also if you lose any screws it's really really hard to get uh, the screws uh, from pure fishing so bear in mind that this is a good reel like in my books it's one of the best and it's of its price range uh, but yeah, if your country uh, have parts readily available, then definitely get this free. If not, then you're gonna have a little bit of uh, challenging time ahead of you. Uh, anyways, this is a solid reel, and I would recommend this to anyone. But uh, one thing that I need to note to pen 
if they're watching this video is that you have to change the lifeliner system to a much simpler system uh, because right now the four positioning will work it will work in the short run but after five years i don't think this notches here will be the same because with use it's gonna be much thinner but from what i could recommend to pen is that to reduce this all four position to just three or maybe two i never use fourth and the third even number one i don't use them i just now use number two because number two is like the strength of my thumb whenever i hold the lever anyways a solid reel and yeah if you're thinking of getting one definitely get one it's a good reel and i think it will last you quite a bit of time pen reels have been proven to last a long time a very long time and i think this one will do the same as how legendary pens of year yesteryears uh, have performed all right i think that's it see you guys again in the next video